dream weapon, of course. Uh, what kind of sparked the whole idea of this album, or what was the exact starting point? Yeah, so, um, you know, for years, we went on hiatus in, I think, 2010, and we didn't intend to spend so many years uh, without making music. It just sort of happened that way. The whole time, we, Michael and I, my, my bandmate, we always knew that we would make another album. We just didn't know when it was going to happen. But the spark occurred in late 2018. Uh, I was moving. I moved across the country. I used to live in California, and now I live in Detroit, Michigan. And when my wife and I were driving across the country, I started writing music again, uh, just on my laptop. We would stop in a place for a couple of days, and I would just try writing little ideas. And by the time we made it to the East Coast of the United States, we spent a weekend visiting Michael, not even to write music. I was just, Michael and I are great friends and we were just gonna hang out and spend time together. But I had come up with one melody that I really wanted to show him. And it was uh, just this little synthesizer arpeggio that, um, that I played for him and he really loved it. And we just sat down together and he started writing some chords on top of it. And uh, even though we hadn't planned on writing music, it just started happening one day when we were hanging out and we looked at each other and said, wow, this feels really good. I mean, it was the first time in 10 years that we had been sitting in a room together writing music. And um, we just felt really good about what was coming together. And we said, you know, if we're ever going to make another album, now is the time to start. We really finally need to do this. So that little uh, idea that I mentioned that ended up becoming the song uh, "Alone in the Heart of the Light," which is track five uh, from our album, so that was the that was the seed that started it all. Yeah, what do you think uh, inspired you on that long drive ac- across the states? Yeah, you know, I think it was um, just in my personal life. I mean, the reason I left California, or one of the reasons I left, like I had I had changed jobs, or I had I had stepped away from my job because I had been working too much, and I just decided. I need time off. So I took four or five months off where I just didn't work at all. And I think during that time when I didn't have all the stress of work uh, and other things in my personal life and just sort of feeling free driving around, um, a lot of sort of creative energy returned to me. And I think I just had the time and the energy for the first time in a long while to really start thinking deeply about music again. So it was on that little drive. I came up with all sorts of little ideas that ended up on that Genghis Tron album. Okay, like you said, that was uh, back in 2018. So, well, you have been working on this music for uh, for a while already. So how do you see it as part of this evolution of your sound like from, let's say, 2005 uh, Cloak of Love, for example? Right, right. Compared to Cloak of Love, it definitely sounds like a different band, I would say. But, um, but I would say, to me, it doesn't sound like a different band compared to Board Up the House, uh, which is our, our most recent album before this one. I mean, I think all of our albums, each, you know, from Cloak of Love to Dead Mountain Mouth to Board Up the House to Dream Weapon, each one sounds different than the one that came before it but there's like a, a connection between each of them. And I think across the whole way, like from the beginning, you know, in, in the very beginning, what was the most interesting to us was just doing a very literal combination of the music genres that we enjoyed. Um, you know, Mike and I were 20 years old, 21, and we said, you know, I mean, we at the same time, we loved Cryptopsy and Brutal Truth, but we also loved Boards of Canada and Square Pusher and Skinny Puppy and Aphex Twin. And uh, we just said, what if we just have songs that combine all this stuff in a blender and mix it all together? Uh, that was really fun for us at, at first, just sort of the shock value of, of having a song that changes styles rapidly. But uh, to be honest, it kind of got, it, it sort of lost its appeal to us pretty early as far as songwriting. We realized it was not as, for us, just not as satisfying as we got a little older, not as satisfying as an approach, uh, of an approach is t- in terms of songwriting. So by the time we, you know, even Dead Mountain Mouth, I think we started moving in the direction of still combining our very disparate and different influences, but to do it in a way that was a little more, a little more cohesive. And I think with every album, it's just gotten a little more and more woven together. Where now we're at the point where I think what we're trying to do is, you know, 
songs that yes, there can still be surprises and left turns and things that are unexpected, but um, like for us, the, the more interesting and the more challenging thing is to weave our influences together and weave our interests together in a way that um, creates a more coherent, cohesive, uh, you know, song structure or album structure. And uh, so I, I, you know, I, I appreciate that our music now sounds quite a bit different than it did 13 years ago, especially because there's really not screaming and there's not a lot of chaotic, um, super fast, crazy arrangements, but the same things that Michael and I have always loved. I mean, things like repetitive, repetitive drum beats or, uh, you know, synthesizer arpeggios that are playing, you know, the same three notes over and over again. I mean, a lot of those elements appeared on Board Up the House as well, uh, like in the first track on the album or I Won't Come Back Alive or the song Relief. I mean, Board Up the House closes with like an 11 minute song that plays the same riff for like seven or eight minutes. So, you know, even back then, 13 years ago, we were started, starting to get interested in more hypnotic, more sort of trance inducing uh, music. And it's just that our, our interests have continued to pull, uh, have rather have continued to strongly pull us in that direction. Yeah. Okay. What about the uh, theme of the album? I read somewhere that uh, this is like a, basically a continuation a bit from 13 years back that uh, humanity has become a burden on this earth and, and uh, well, the earth will survive, but humanity maybe not. So that's a, well, it's a very current, I think, the the theme. Like, well, but what has kind of led you guys to this kind of uh, thoughts? You know, I think it's just, just a reflection on reality and on where things seem to be headed. Um, and that was the, you're correct that that's a continuation on a theme from the previous album because the closing song, Relief, that 11 minute track I already mentioned, that was really the idea for that song lyrically. I mean, it's called Relief because it was about the notion of the planet maybe feeling relieved when we're gone or maybe some relief that we even feel at the notion that someday we will, that we will be gone and our burden will, will you know, be lifted from the planet. Um, but uh, that was something we felt strongly in 2007. And obviously uh, the situation hasn't like, <laughs> hasn't really, you know, you, I have no reason to expect any different now than I did 13 years ago, you know? And so that sort of existential dread uh, surrounding the direction of the planet and the direction of humanity uh, is still, you know, is in my head and still weighs, weighs on me uh, in my life. And, you know, I won't say it gets me down or it's on my mind all the time, but it's definitely um, a strong psychic force, I think, just sort of that knowledge. And so uh, even though we only spent one song on that, on that theme in the last album, we thought that really there's a lot there. There are a lot of feelings there to explore, a lot of emotions, and it seemed appropriate for us to we just felt like we had more to say or more to feel around that. And we wanted to have a, an album length meditation on that theme. And, um, you know, and it's, and, and we, part of why we wanted to explore it for an album is because it's a, there's a lot of complexity there. I mean, it's not just sadness and it's not just fear, although I definitely feel those things, but there's also, again, to the, back to the concept of relief. I mean, the idea of sort of trying to find acceptance in, in this reality and to, um, uh, and by, and when I say accept, I don't mean just to, to not try to make things better or to not fight for the planet or anything like that, but rather um, just to, to try to find some peace in, in knowing that certain things are just completely out of our control at this point. And, um, and you know, as individuals, and in the meantime, you know, we're very lucky to be here on this earth. And there are lots of opportunities for finding sort of beauty and, and love in the world uh, while we're all here. So it's definitely sort of a bittersweet thing, but um, we have a lot of feelings and thoughts around that. And the album sort of explores a lot of them in, in a loose sense. It's not like a strong literal concept, but I'd say that's sort of like the 
emotional world that the that the album is in. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that uh, the picture of Earth without humans, it, it is a beautiful and poetic picture. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, looking back at that uh, hiatus time, 13 years, uh, in a hindsight, uh, what do you think that was all about? You know, it's nothing interesting, really. I mean, we it's 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 honestly it's a little hard to remember exactly what my mind was like when we started the hiatus i know one very literal reason was that we were just a little tired of touring as much as we had we had been touring and playing shows a lot for you know four years five years and um it got to the point where for me i started to feel a risk that genghis tron was going to be start to feel like an obligation and not like a passion um and uh you know okay we just have to tour six or seven months every year and that's the way you have to make a living and um and then enable to be able to have time to write music then you know you spend a couple months doing that and then you go back out on tour i mean touring is a, is a privilege and we really love playing shows but after a while um i think we were just getting a little burned out and so we said let's take six months off or let's take a year off and let's just take a step back and um, before you know it, the one year turned into two years, turned into three years. And it, it, none of us really felt a strong desire to start touring again. And, um, and we all lived in different places. We moved around the country. Uh, some of us started families. We all started new jobs. And it just was, you know, music or at least Genghis Tron started taking a, a back seat in our lives. Um, it was always there in my mind. It was always something that I wanted to do. And every year, even if only once a year, I would try to write something and try to write some music just to keep the, the ideas going. But um, yeah, it really was just sort of life getting in the way. And um, we all just needed to explore other things in our life, in our lives before we were able to, you know, it took just a long time before Michael and I were both, you know, mutually available and really ready to start doing it again. Um, but it, we didn't want the the hiatus to be that long. And and in retrospect, it was um, in some ways it was really hard on me. Like my, uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but I think it was after a couple of years of working a lot and not doing much music. I mean, it was sort of my part of my soul felt like it was dying. You know, by not not working on music it felt like a part of me was was sort of starving or something and um you know i really missed making music and ever since michael and i have started working together again in 2018 um you know it's really changed my life for the better it's it's something that i always want to have in my life and so uh i i don't i don't know how long it'll be before we release more music but it definitely won't be 13 years because uh I, i'm not going to do that again where i sort of put music to the side for a long time because uh, i just i don't want to live like that again yeah okay during that long die long time uh, did it change your uh the way you think or your view of how you see music or king is thrown um not explicitly i mean I think there probably were just some, just from from time and, uh, you know, I know that I, you know, my, some of my influences changed. I'd say that I still love all the same music now that I did in 2008 when we recorded Board Up the, or when we released Board Up the House. But, um, so it's not like I dislike any of the music that I like then, but I like a lot more stuff, like sort of my influences have broadened and even even during those years when Michael and I weren't writing much music, we always would be listening to music. I mean, we're just, we're music nerds. We love just listening to new stuff, rediscovering old stuff, sharing music with one another. So um, I think that in a subtle way, you know, just some of my interests and influences probably slightly affected um, some of what I bring to the Genghis Tron songwriting. But, uh, but at the same time, I think we knew even in 2008 or 2009 that our next album was going to be something that was more warm, more hypnotic, more um, maybe more organic, more atmospheric. Uh, that was something even then that we knew we wanted to do. So, um, so in some ways, I feel like if we had recorded this album in 2013 instead of 2020, 
um, it would not not that it would have been the exact same, but I think um, I think it would have been um, maybe just as different from board up the house as as Dream Weapon is now. Um, so uh, so yeah, I'd say that yeah, just sort of getting maybe getting older. I I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, um, I I like the idea of making an album where the arrangements are more clear and you can hear everything that's going on a little better and where the instruments have more breathing room. And uh, I don't know if that's, um, I don't know if that's something that's, uh, you know, that I, if I would have felt the same in 2010 or not, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, so I, I think the time necessarily has, has probably had some change on, on the way I think about songwriting.